Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia's capital, is under siege from flash floods. Powerful forces of nature that bring the city to its knees. But Kuala Lumpur is fighting back. A daring construction project will try to bring the mighty floods under control. Massive floodgates across three rivers. Six kilometers of canals. Giant storage ponds. And a state-of-the-art stormwater tunnel that doubles as an underground highway. It will be an epic battle of man versus nature. Fought on the front lines of a modern city. Kuala Lumpur, the financial hub of one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And home to almost two million people. But this dynamic city has an Achilles heel. The city is built at the junction of two major river systems. When heavy rain strikes, the city begins to fill. Warnings are issued as the rivers start to rise. In the past, this deluge resulted in flash floods, once or twice a decade. But now, urban expansion has turned the occasional flooding into an almost yearly disaster. Going through this way. That has been to... Datuk Kesrul Abdullah has spent the past 15 years battling the country's flood problems. We still have a problem. Floods have become more common, it's become more severe, and it's causing more damages. It's no longer just lives that are at risk, the country's future is on the line. We have had flood incidences, flood events where the damage was so big, it had the effect of for almost equivalent to 1% of the GDP. Kuala Lumpur is on the west coast of the Malaysian Peninsula, in the Klang Valley. Six rivers run through the valley, converging in downtown Kuala Lumpur. In the past, Kesrul widened the rivers to increase the flow of water through the city. Now, buildings line the banks on either side. Widening is no longer an option. Relocating people away from flood-prone areas is out of the question. Six and a half million people fill every available space between KL and the mountains. There's nowhere else to go. The only solution, build a series of engineered structures that will keep the waters out of downtown Kuala Lumpur. There will be four lines of defense in and around the city. The first line, heavily fortified barrages to stop the main rivers in their tracks. The second line, canals to divert the water away from the city. The third line, the world's first smart tunnel. A giant stormwater pipe that doubles as an underground highway. A combination that's never been attempted before. The fourth and final line of defense giant ponds to store the water until the floods recede. And they've just four years to build it. 
If they can pull it off, it will be a man-made marvel. But it won't be easy. The worksite is a bustling metropolis. They can't halt the city or turn the rivers off. The barrages will have to be built in the riverbeds during the rainy season. It's not a worksite for the faint-hearted. But it's the smart tunnel that's the most challenging part of this epic plan. A dual-purpose tunnel has never been built before. We were definitely venturing into the unknown, really, in engineering terms in many aspects of the project. If that weren't enough, Kuala Lumpur is built on unstable cast limestone. Tunneling through this labyrinth is extremely dangerous. A lot of people told me that it is a crazy idea to try to build a tunnel in this karstic limestone, but we didn't have an option. There was nowhere else to go. It's a mammoth plan that will cost half a billion US dollars. If they get it wrong, it will be a very expensive mistake. Before he can begin, Kesro must understand everything about the enemy. Flood mapping experts begin by gathering intelligence on the Klang Valley and the flood zone. There are genuine pressures here. There is the pressure of development. There is a lot of rainfall here in a tropical region. There is a major city located in close proximity to a confluence of major rivers. To better understand the situation on the ground, they turn to the sky, where a state-of-the-art laser maps the ground at 25,000 beams per second, turning information into a virtual KL. From these, the hydrologists build a computer model of the entire valley. Here's the confluence with Gombak, and now we're going to move up and follow the Klang River up this way. We can see that there's a lot of flooding happening, all the blue is spreading out in between the buildings. And the reason that we build these models is that we can then test a scenario. So we call this the what-if scenario. Well, what if we built a dam? What if we caught all that water before it actually went down to the KL uh, city centre? It's trial and error in the virtual world to find the best solution for the real world. With this high-tech intelligence, Kesrul can now put his plan into action. But combating nature isn't just about a plan. At some point, you have to send troops out into the field. A field where flash floods strike at any time. Malaysia, a tropical country where heavy rain causes heavy flooding. To this day, many Malaysians still call on BOMOs, or traditional healers, to help control the elements. The ceremonies are varied, but the goal the same. To bring fine weather. But now, the weather has gone beyond belief alone. Even the BOMOs of Malaysia need reinforcements. And they're getting it with some heavy construction power. Masterminding the project is Datu Kesrul Abdullah, driven by his experience in one of KL's worst flooding events. There was three days of rain, then the water started to come up. Water was coming in under, under, the, under the door. Uh, we tried, our family, we tried to get old rags and tried to, to block it, but it doesn't work. So the water came in, 
started to rise, and then we, we shifted our television, electrical things, put it on the table, and the water kept rising. And at that time, we don't know if it will continue to go up and up, then where do we go to? And that was in 1971, when KL was flooded, and I was in school at that time. I, I'm glad I'm in a position now to be able to do something about this flood problem. Flash floods happen when more rain falls than the land can absorb. Normally, forests and other green zones soak up rainfall. But asphalt and concrete don't absorb water at all. Drains help replace the natural reservoirs. But Kuala Lumpur is growing faster than its drainage systems can cope. As more and more green space is turned into roads and urban development, the risk of flash floods increases. So we have done some, some studies and our studies